Strange, but true stories. Tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. Aliens. You know, more and more evidence of not just alien life being out there in the cosmos, but actually visiting us here on Earth continues to trickle out. Just a few weeks ago, the CIA declassified and released about 2,700 pages from its files on UFOs. Those documents are available on the Black Vault website, which is an online archive of declassified government documents. While today's story is not ripped from those files, it is an incredibly intriguing and well-investigated alien abduction case from Italy. Pier Fortunato Zanfretta was an ordinary man, working an ordinary job as a night watchman in a rather ordinary village near Genoa, Italy. Every day was similar to the previous, and he would have been completely content to keep it that way. But an extraordinary event on the night of December 6, 1978, changed Zanfretta's life completely, and there would not be the semblance of normalcy in his life for quite some time. That Wednesday started out like any other Wednesday in his working life in the village of Torilia. Torilia is part of the larger city of Genoa, which is a port city on the Mediterranean in the northern part of Italy. But instead of a ship arriving by water that night, it was a ship that arrived through the air that would turn Zanfretta's life upside down and inside out. Snow had fallen the previous few days in northern Italy. It was 11.30 p.m., and Zanfretta was patrolling in his car on the snow-covered roads of the village on this chilly night when his car suddenly stopped. He looked at the instrument panel of his car, but everything seemed to be working fine. His car was simply not moving, despite pressing the accelerator and hearing the motor rev. He looked around outside the car for any hint of what might be holding his car back. It was then that he noticed four mysterious lights coming from a house that he knew to be owned by a local doctor. His first thought was that there were burglars attempting to break into the house. Setting aside his car trouble for the moment, Zanfretta got out of his patrol car and went to investigate. He approached the house cautiously, listening for any talk or noise that might indicate what was happening. He slowly walked around to the back of the house, where the lights seemed to be coming from. As he got closer to the backyard, he noticed more of a red glow that wouldn't be indicative of flashlights, but more like a bank of lights would make. As he rounded the corner and looked into the backyard, what he saw was literally something from out of this world. There, parked on the grass, Zanfretta saw a large red oval craft, more than 10 meters or 33 feet in diameter. He was stunned by what he saw, no doubt. He turned back around the side of the house and radioed his supervisor. Zanfretta frantically screamed into the radio mic, most of which was indiscernible to his supervisor. Zanfretta took another peek into the backyard at the craft, and that's when he saw the creatures coming towards him. He screamed into his radio again, describing something that was three meters or nearly ten feet tall, mottled skin, triangular yellow eyes, and clawed feet. The supervisor thought Zanfretta was confused, but obviously he was in trouble. He asked him if he was being attacked by men, to which Zanfretta replied, No, non sono uomini, non sono uomini, which translates into English as, No, they are not men. They are not men. And then his radio went silent. Officers were dispatched quickly to the location. Upon arrival, Zanfretta was found unconscious. After a few minutes, he began to regain consciousness, but he was still in a state of panic, and he reached for his weapon thinking he was still being attacked by the aliens. It was only after comforting words in Italian that Zanfretta calmed down. One odd thing the men noted later about Zanfretta was that his clothes were very warm to the touch, as if he had been inside by a fire instead of outside in the cold, snowy weather for several minutes. Sometime later, under hypnosis, he described the aliens in more detail and gave an account of what happened after his radio went silent. 
According to what was uncovered in his regressive memory, Zanfretta said he was taken aboard the alien craft and into an extremely bright room where he was examined and interviewed through an interpretive device by green creatures with triangular yellow eyes. They had big thorns on their heads and green flesh that hung very loosely on them, full of wrinkles as if they were really old or perhaps were wearing loose clothing. Their ears were pointed, and their mouths looked as if they were made of metal. Red veins popped out of their heads. The Carabinieri, or the Italian military police, were called in to investigate. They found physical evidence of the encounter, such as very large footprints and a deep U-shaped imprint on the ground about two meters or close to seven feet across. There were also scorched trees in the backyard. The Carabinieri interviewed people of the village and found more than 50 witnesses to seeing a strange craft hovering in the area around 1,500 meters or about 5,000 feet above the city, with the first reported sighting around 7.30 that evening. The investigation also revealed that five shots had been fired from Zanfretta's pistol, though he had no recollection of ever firing his gun. Journalist Rino Di Stefano covered the investigation from the start and eventually detailed the events of that night in his book, The Zanfretta Case, Chronicle of an Incredible True Story, released in 2014. Zanfretta called the aliens the reptilians and that they came from a planet called Titonia, located in the third galaxy, and that they would be coming back to Earth in greater numbers sometime in the future. But this wasn't the only time that Zanfretta claimed to have been abducted by the reptilians. Just a few weeks later, on December 26, 1978, again he was on night patrol, and he told a similar account to his first, that his car stalled, but then something took control of his car, pulling it along the road, away from the village, and into a field with a blinding white light. He was taken back aboard the ship, questioned again, but this time with what he described as a very uncomfortable helmet encasing his head. He was released after an extended session. Again in July 1979, he was visited by the reptilians, but this time not only was he taken aboard the ship, but says he was taken into deep space. For some reason unknown to Zenfretta, he was shown several creatures housed in biotic capsules. There was a creature he described as a frog-like creature and was told that it was an enemy species to the reptilians. There was a bird-like creature shown to him, as well as what Zanfretta described as an ancient, primitive man in a biotic capsule. Over the period beginning December 1978 through 1981, Zanfretta claimed to have been abducted 11 times by the reptilians, with the reason behind many of these abductions beyond his comprehension. Zanfretta has been interviewed by many Italian television shows, and his story not only became the focus of Stefano's 2014 book, but also was turned into a play with an English-translated title of The True Story of the Most Famous Alien Abduction in Italy. Pierre Fortunato Zanfretta is now 68 years old and still lives in northern Italy. Long may he live. This has been another strange but true story. Time now to tell us what you think about this account in the comments below. And if you have a strange but true account you'd like to share with us, we'd love to read it. Send your story with as much detail as possible in an email to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Big thanks and appreciation to all those who have. And thanks for watching this video. Be well, and we'll see you soon.